This is Battering Ram from Shackmat. It's a great sounding kick drum module that I've been using for a few weeks now. It's already made an appearance as a supporting player in my last couple of videos, but I wanted to do a demo where it's front and centre because it has some pretty cool tricks up its sleeve. Using the CV input you can coax Tom-like sounds out of it alongside the kicks. And you can pair it with a module like the Jasmine and Olive Tree's Traffic to create some more heavily contrasted percussion sounds. If you send it a pitch sequence, it can work pretty well as a bassline synth too. It has a handy envelope output that's great for layering other sounds on top. And you can invert the envelope output, which is perfect for side-chaining the rest of your patch to let the kick punch through. Before I get into those patches, I'll do a quick run through the front panel controls and let you hear the full range of tones it can produce. Also, full disclosure, Shackmat gave me this unit, so this is a demo, not a review. But as always, I do only feature stuff on this channel that I genuinely think is great. So with that in mind, let's crack on. So the front panel controls of Battering Ram are pretty straightforward. Uh, we've got a manual trigger button here at the top right, which lets us trigger the kick. But let's um, feed a pattern into the trigger input so that I can demonstrate the other controls a bit more easily. So just a little kick pattern from PAMS. Um, yeah, control-wise we've got the drive control at the top which adds in green mode kind of wave folding distortion which adds some nice harmonics and gives it a nice kind of quite subtle but quite punchy kind of effect. The red mode, if we switch the drive type here, this is more of a clipping distortion which adds a lot more harmonics. can add a lot of grit and character. Uh, the decay control controls the decay of the envelope. I'm just going to leave the green drive about a third of the way up. Get very short and clicky. Getting around 12 o'clock is pretty sweet. And then the depth and click controls both relate to the envelope that's applied to the pitch of the sound for um, basically shaping the transient. The depth is the decay time of that envelope and the click is the amount of that that's added. So let's just, you can hear as this click comes up, we get this kind of clicky transient and with greater depth. So between the amplitude decay and this pitch decay, which is controlled by depth and the amount of that pitch envelope, on the red distortion mode. Get quite zappy. But it lets you take it from kind of 808 style, quite sine wavy, subby kind of kicks to more 909 style. slightly punchy and more mid-rangey kind of kicks with that pitch envelope. Talking of pitch, we have a pitch control at the bottom, which has a two octave range at the moment. There are a couple of hidden settings you access via these buttons which can increase that range to five octaves. And you get a greater range via the pitch CV input as well. So if you wanted to use this as a bass voice, you can feed a volt per octave sequence to the pitch input and get a pretty wide range of tones there. Um, Button-wise, yeah, we've got the drive type, which toggles between green and red. We've got um, a store and recall button, which will basically press and hold it to save the settings. Press it once again, short to recall them. 
Um, there's also a select bus protocol for storing presets if you're using other ShackMap modules that uses the um, uh, power cables on the back. Uh, I don't have anything else to explore that today. Um, the level button at the top, that basically lets you set the maximum output level of the module or the, or the phenomenal kind of output level. You just press and hold and turn the drive knob to adjust that. Normally you just keep that maxed. That will flash until you then return to whichever drive position you were in before. So there we are, that's back to how we were. Um, if you have a velocity CV input connected to velocity, then pressing and holding that and adjusting the knob sets the minimum level for zero volts of velocity, which basically lets you set a window that the velocity will uh, affect in terms of the amplitude. Um, other buttons down here, we've got gate mode. So if you hit gate, that will basically hold or keep the kick oscillating for as long as the gate is high, which basically gives you a longer tone depending on how long your how long the gate is. We've obviously got these 50% cycle gates coming in from PAMS just now. That's more useful if you're using it as a, a bass voice, um, as, a, as a kind of bass line generator. Uh, the HBF button is a high pass filter that rolls off everything below about 30 hertz. That's really useful for removing stuff that you can't hear, but which is taking up energy and headroom. Um, I normally leave that on all the time because it basically sounds great with that on, and I don't think there's anything under 30 hertz that I'm missing. Um, lock will lock the pitch, uh, and then it becomes an octave switch, depending on where it's set before you lock it. Uh, and the invert button relates to the envelope output. So this output here will give you um, a copy of the CV envelope that's being used for the amplitude on the battering ram, which you could use to control something else in your patch. If you press invert, then it will invert that envelope and it will either give you a kind of offset so it's always high and then the envelope will duck that high voltage or uh, you can set it to produce negative CV um, when, the, when, when the envelope is inverted. You'll hear the effect of those things in one of the future patches. Uh, and then, yeah, finishing off down the bottom, we've got CV inputs for the drive, the decay, uh, the pitch overall, the amount of click, and the velocity. We don't ever see input for the depth. That's the only one that doesn't. Uh, but yeah, that's there the controls. Let's start patching it. Okay, I've popped the battering ram in the middle of the pallet case here, and I'll just quickly explain some of the other modules I'll be using in the video. Next to it, I've got the ALM Squid sample, which I'll be using for some additional drum and percussion sounds. I'll be mixing both of those through the ALM Mega Tang mixer, and I've got the ALM MFX in the send and return loop there as well for effects. I'll be sequencing from the Arturia Beatstep Pro mostly, but I'll also be doing some from PAMS Pro Workout, also from ALM over here, and I'll explain anything else as I get to it in the patches. One other thing just to quickly call out is these little black clips you might notice dotted around. These are nest tamers. They're a new thing we're distributing at Signal Sounds. Really handy for tidying cables up around your case. They just screw in in the normal module screw holes. Um, I'll pop a link in the description for more info on them. Anyway, let's crack on with the first patch. And I want to explore using some of the CV inputs to turn an otherwise quite static kick drum patch into something a bit more dynamic. Let's just get a little sequence playing. I'm going to be sequencing actually the kick drum from sequencer one in the Beatstep Pro rather than the drum lanes. That's so I can use the velocity and uh, pitch outputs to CV control some of those parameters in battering RAM. So let's quickly get that going. I've got a fairly busy pattern here, which is 4-4 with a few extra things in between. And the way battering RAM's level and velocity work, you hold down level, set the minimum level that you want velocity to be. Let's just turn the drive down a bit. And now if I take the velocity lane out of sequencer one and go into velocity, I've basically turned down the velocity on those steps in between the four four beats, which makes it sound a bit more dynamic. I've just a little touch of plate reverb on here as well. And if I take the pitch output and go into the pitch here as well, I basically tuned up those steps in between the beats up an octave and up two octaves in the case of the last one. So now we've got these kind of, the kicks in between are acting a bit more like toms, a bit like 909 toms, that kind of effect. And then when we bring some other drums in too. Or 
although we're only really sequencing four sounds here, it sounds a lot more complex with those additional kicks being modulated to turn into toms. Okay, next I want to take the idea in that previous patch on a bit by using the Jasmine and Olive Tree's traffic module here to produce three quite distinct drum and percussion sounds from Battering Ram. If you're not familiar with traffic, then do check out my previous video. It's basically a pretty clever little module that takes three trigger ins, and for each trigger, it will output a different combination of CV values, which you can then route to three different parameters on your module of choice, in this case, Battering Ram. Um, so I've got CVA going to pitch, CVB going to the amount of drive, and CVC going to the decay time. And that means for each trigger, I can set a different combination of those three settings and effectively switch between three different sounds. There's a trig sum output which goes into the trigger input of battering ram, which means that for any one of those three triggers coming in, it will put a trigger out into battering ram. And yeah, let's have a little listen. So at the moment I've got the settings all kind of matched and I've basically dialed them in to be a kind of boomy low kick drum. I've got a little bit of spring reverb on from MFX. I'm just going to dial that back slightly. And if I start tuning up a couple of those triggers, you'll see. You can see those LEDs, that's the, that's the rhythmic pattern that's coming in, which are basically the first three pads on the drum lane on the Beat Step Pro. So let's tune. Tune those up quite high. And let's make the high pitch tits a bit more distorted by turning the drive up. And let's turn the decay time down on both of those as well, make them a bit blippier. And I can make the kick a bit boomier. Let's give the kick a bit of drive as well. So you see, you can now, just by dialing in these settings, it's all coming out of battering ram, but they're quite different sounds. Let's bring in a couple more sounds from Squid Sample and have a little play. Got a little bit of randomness from Beat Step Pro as well. and uh, slinky reverb and MFX. Quite fun to play around with. So it's possible to use battering ram as a simple monophonic bass voice. If you engage the gate mode and then feed your pitch CV into the pitch input and a gate signal into the trigger input, you get a simple kind of uh, bass tone where you can control the decay time of the envelope. It will sustain for as long as you hold the note down. And then you can use the drive to kind of shape the tone a bit and, and the click to kind of control the transient of the attack. So here's what it sounds like with the drive down and the click and depth down in the green mode. Nice kind of subby bass line. Just pitch it up slightly so you can hear the notes a bit better. And then as you engage the drive, with the note held, you can hear how you can kind of influence the tone. Let's go into red mode. And the decay will obviously control how long it rings out for. Let's stay in green mode with a sort of shortish decay. Um, and I'll just play a little sequence so we can play with the transients a bit as well. So this is a pretty simple kind of subby bass line. And you can give the front a bit of punch. But for a bass sound you normally wouldn't want quite such a 
kick drum style transient as that. What I've got running from Pam's Pro is a tempo synced LFO, which I'm running through the quadrat and then into the drive input. If I bring this up, we can give it a bit of kind of wobble effect. Let's bring some drums in. Just some 808 kit sounds from the squid sample. And the red mode's a bit more dramatic. So you can create these kind of quite impactful, wobbly sort of basses quite easily. So in this patch, I want to explore using the envelope output of Battering Ram to open a VCA that's going to let through some noise to add an extra layer of texture to the basic kick drum sound. So here's the basic kick as it stands. I've got this running through the first channel of the ALM Megatang. And then I've got the noise output of my rung divisions just to give me a kind of white noise source. I'm running that through the Belgrade filter off screen, uh, and that's coming in on the second channel of the mixer. If I just fade this up, that's what that noise layer sounds like. But if I take the envelope output from Battering Ram and go into the VCA level input on Megatang on the second channel, that now gives me a nice tight little bit of white noise, or filtered noise rather, which I can control the level of with this channel fader. So nothing. And by adding a bit of ping pong delay, to that we can get a nice little sort of pseudo hi-hat part as well which is quite nice in stereo and of course the decay time of that envelope is determined by the decay control on battering ram so as the kick gets longer so does the noise so we can kind of exploit that as well let's use a little cv sequence into the decay just to give a bit more dynamics. And so this envelope really brings a whole new level to the patch. If we filter that noise. Okay, for this last patch, I'm going to look at using the envelope output again, but this time with the inverted mode switched on, which will give me an inverted envelope every time the kick hits, which I can use to sidechain some other elements of a patch. Let's just listen to what the elements are. I've got a kick drum set up like this on the first channel of the mixer here, and then I've also got some hi-hats and a clap from the squid sample, and I've got a bass line, which is just off screen the Chaos Devices Sophia. Just a really simple baseline, all sequence from Pam's Pro here. And then I've got a chord from Platts, which I'm running through the Belgrade filter, again, just off screen. Just a simple two chord kind of groove. No side chaining happening as yet. They're the elements. So if I take the inverted envelope output from battering ram to this mult so I can use it on a few different um, places and I've got the VCA inputs on the Megatang mixer which is quite handy so I'm going to patch this to the, all three of the other channels via the mult on the palette case so that's the hi-hats the bass line and the chord and let's just mute the kick drum for a second and mute the other two parts let's start with a chord and if I fire the sequence off again, we're not going to hear the kick drum, but I'm going to keep triggering it from PAMS so we get the envelope, which you'll hear will start to kind of duck the chord sound on each beat. It's quite subtle, but you can kind of hear it dipping every quarter note. To make it a little bit more obvious, I'm going to root another copy of that envelope to the filter. So you can hear that filter kind of sweeping. That's the kind of shape of the envelope. Now let's bring in the bass line as well. This is 
pretty subtle, but it's just going to dock that bass line whenever the kick drum is going to coincide with it. And likewise, the hats and clap. You can hear them kind of having that pumped compression kind of sound. And now when I bring the kick drum back in, it will really punch through the mix. If I mute the kick drum, you'll really hear the difference as well. Let's mute it in pounds. So there's everything running with no side chaining. And so it really helps that kick to punch through the mix and tighten the whole thing up. So I'm going to leave it there for now. Hopefully this video gives you a sense of what battering ram can do and maybe sparks a few patch ideas of your own. If you've enjoyed the video, then please leave a comment and a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I'll be back soon, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.